morning welcome back to the channel it is another beautiful day here in Washington State you can hear the birds chirping some geese in the background and I'm out here at a new lake um, yeah this is a newly public lake sort of in the Tuhi area headed out toward Tuhi I wouldn't consider this proper Tuhi yet but um, I'll show you around the launch so there's the Civic bathrooms which are nice and clean there's the lake the launch is the launch is right down there there's like a little trail we'll, we'll go down there and uh, yeah parking for I don't know probably 15 vehicles at max. So yeah, it's supposed to hit 70 today out here. Um, I'm really stoked on this lake. I hope that it uh, it produces some bass. That would be really cool. Got everything tied up last night. Got some fresh leader knots tied. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm stoked. I'm ready. Um, we're gonna give this a fair shake. We're gonna fish it pretty good. Um, and if it doesn't produce, then uh, we might go. To tea. Uh, we'll see. But I tell you what, I'm gonna pull the car, back the car right over there so I don't have to carry the yak as far. Uh, and uh, we'll get to dragging everything down to the launch. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, we were out in the water. Plenty of geese out here doing their thing. So this lake's interesting. I was out here about a month ago, just kind of scoping things out on a rather dreary day. And uh, there's two areas of the lake that um, are marked conservancy area, no wake. Um, there's a big stump field at the other end of the lake. And then there's this marshland that all these geese are in up here. So, um, I think they kind of want you to avoid those areas, uh, especially this time of year when there's migrant birds moving around. So, I'm going to stick to the docks and the structure. I got a pretty decent look around last time. Um, wow, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, a ton of them. I thought it was too cold for mosquitoes. Anyways, uh, I'm going to get to paddling. The wind's blowing this way so I think I'm gonna start up here and just start working working the lake um, like I said before I don't have much battery life on this session so I'll just turn it on if I hook up every the all the in-between stuff's gonna be on the other camera so bear with me all right let's get to it we gotta get out of these mosquitoes guys this is like next level Was bad. So I'm on the north side of the lake and uh, it's really pretty over there. I'd like to get back there with the kayak. So this is interesting. <clears throat> it's always interesting getting out on a new lake for the first time. The wind's calm uh, everywhere else but it's like it's being funneled down the north portion of this lake. It's probably blowing like 15, which doesn't sound like much, but in a kayak, it's actually quite a bit, so. I think it's a trout, <laughs> which is a little bit of a bummer, but he's, I think it's pretty big. Yeah, it's a pretty big trout.
wearing himself out. Oh, it feels good to be hooked up to a fish. Yeah, it's a nice trout. Come here, on the spinner bait. He's big enough to eat it. He's big enough to eat it. Calm down, sir. Calm down. Dude, chill, chill. Chill out. Holy shit, he inhaled this thing. I might as well keep this fucking thing. Ah, uh, yeah. Well. Not what I planned on. Not what I planned on. Give me a second, this gives us kind of bloody. I wasn't prepared to keep a fish. It's okay though, we'll improvise. It is what it is. Alright y'all, here's a, a nice, a really nice wild rainbow. He's still got his adipose. Um, put him out of his misery real quick. He inhaled the spinner bait. It went through his gill rake and uh, when he was fighting it ripped out his gill so he's gonna be uh probably a late lunch or dinner i might even smoke him um he's got kind of a sunken eye on that side that eye looks good anyways guys i'm gonna throw him in the front hatch and uh that kind of limits my fishing time for today but that's okay well the wind has picked up it's probably blown 20. um that was really unintentional, guys. I really did not come out here to catch a trout, especially keep one. Things happen. I'm really kind of bummed about it, but I'm going to smoke them. I'm going to smoke them on the smoker and uh, make the best out of it. So, yeah, he, I cannot believe uh, that trout fit that whole spinnerbait down his whole mouth. But yeah, anyways, uh, it'll make some good, uh, it'll make some good smoke, smoke trout. So, um, Alright, we're off the water, getting loaded up. That was rough coming in. I've had smoother days on the sound. Jesus. I was having to lean to the right to kind of brace into the waves, but yeah, kind of bummed about that trout, but at the same time, I'm not. It was a good fight, and uh, yeah, that is what it is. So, See you on the road. Alright guys, so uh, we're in Hansville, a uh, sleepy little seaside village if you will. I think they've, they've got a post office and uh, one restaurant that's got limited hours so it, it's just uh it's mostly a residential area really but uh point no point where i caught the sunrise the other morning is up here um as well as foul weather bluff so that's where i'm headed now like i said it is absolutely gorgeous out here like yeah yeah i'm really stoked i'm having fun driving the mustang and uh <laughs> yeah good time. See you when we get to the parking lot. Couple of the people that are gonna be out there. That's all right. It's a big enough beach. 
Sun is shining, birds are chirping. All right, I know I've taken you guys here before on the channel. It's a really cool beach. You got the Olympics. Hook Canal Bridge is over there. I'll sprinkle in some footage of that here. That's a really, really long floating bridge over a very deep part of the Hood Canal. But it is a glass out today. Just beautiful. And you got all these madrona trees that grow along here, which are really cool trees. I think they're really pretty. They got that like red bark, paper bark to them. It's, it's pretty cool. A couple people down the beach there. I think I'm gonna walk up this way. Yeah, Pacific Northwest at its finest. It's gonna be a good one today. It's gonna be a beautiful day. I see these, uh, maybe you can tell me what they are. These paw prints. They don't look like dog prints to me though. <clears throat> Not at all. Four or five. <sighs> Is it an otter? Otter? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Sea otter. Maybe they come up on the beach and do whatever sea otters do. Yeah, when I was a, a young buck, like, I don't know, probably 10 or 11. I had it set in my mind that I wanted to be a marine biologist. It's when we were living up here. Taking a lot of school field trips to local beaches. Um, but anyways, I used to love picking through the beach at low tide and identifying species and stuff like that. It was fun. So whenever I get down here at low tide, it's always, it's always a good time for me. Ooh. Some sea anemones down there. Let's see if I can show you guys. Let's keep walking a little bit. I'm having fun just kind of, the more I look, the more sea enemies I see. They're all over the place. And I'm sure if we turned over some rocks, we'd see some, some little crabs. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll bother a couple crabs real quick. Let's do that. I bet you there's one under here. Let's do it. Yeah, there he is. There's two. He's staying still. All right, let's put his home back. This is fun. Brings me back to being a kid. All right, we made it down the beach. Look at this rock, y'all. I've never seen such a perfect seat in my life. comfortable though. A little cold on the butt, but I can't complain too much. With a view like that, I think the tide's going out. Uh, I just want to make sure it is going out or it's just not really doing much because there's a little skinny bit of beach that I got to get back through, so don't really feel like waiting today.
Y'all, this is so much fun. There's so much going on out here. Big old group of seals just moved through, or sea lions, whatever the hell they were. All kinds of birds doing their thing. Very cool. Alright guys, it's time to get out of here. We got some things to do today. So uh, I'll see you back at the car. So something very interesting just happened. I almost stepped on a snake, which freaked me out. I spent a lot of time in the desert and places where there are rattlesnakes, so I was spooked, but it's just a gardener snake. I thought about picking him up, but he's just chilling, and I kind of don't want to get bit. Uh, I've been bitten by these things before, and it doesn't really hurt. It's just kind of uncomfortable. Not only that, I found a pair of Oakleys. Check this out. Fresh pair of Oakleys. I need new sunglasses. We'll leave him be. I'm snagging those Oakleys though. All right, y'all, we're back at the car. That was so enjoyable. Um, got some sun on my skin. It was a good start to the day. Yeah, let's get on the road back home. We got some things to do today. All right, so what you just saw me doing there was I patted the, the meat down as dry as I could get it and uh, now it's back in the fridge, uncovered, and uh, it needs to get air circulating on it to form, I guess, what they call a pellicle. And, uh, it helps the smoke flavor stick to the meat better. I am brand new to smoking stuff. I've only successfully smoked one thing, and that was some store-bought steelhead. <laughs> I've yet to catch my first steelhead. Give me a break, guys. But anyway, some store-bought steelhead that I smoked up a couple weeks ago uh, in this offset that I'm about to show you. And that turned out real good. I hot smoked it um, for like three hours, two and a half, three hours, something like that. Um, so, see, so yeah, I was a learning process, um, heat management, uh, the whole, the whole nine yards. I'm still brand new to it. So, hopefully today goes well. Um, I'm gonna give it like three and a half, four hours to pellicle, and then we'll bring it out and uh, get it on, um, get it on the smoker. So this is my offset. It's uh, just like a cheap, no brand offset. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a cleaning and then, uh, okay, that's still, I thought that was loose for a second. No. Uh, See, so yeah, we'll be smoking it with Alder. I've heard this is like a good, mild flavored smoke for like fish and chicken and stuff like that. Yeah. But we'll get this cleaned up and stuff like that. Still got some uh, yard work to do today, as you can tell. Uh, I just, I weed whacked. Really, I wanted to get around the, the burn pit. Um, I gotta, I gotta prep that for a fire uh, today. Probably gonna burn tomorrow, because um, we only got a couple days left of this stuff until um, the rainy weather kind of moves back in. So, yeah, let's get busy.
Got the grill all cleaned up. Yard's done. For the most part. And uh, yeah, just got done blowing, cleaning everything up. Yeah. We got uh we got some time to kill now, actually. We're gonna take a little break and get something in uh we're gonna take a little break and get something to eat. And uh yeah, after that I'll get back to you and see where we're at with the uh, trout. Alright, welcome to the afternoon. It is uh still absolutely beautiful out. Probably in the low 60s. Time to start the fire to smoke the trout. Got some 90s country in the background going on. Uh, yeah, let's get it going. I want to smoke this for a while, really pump it full of smoke flavor. Because uh, trout on its own doesn't really taste like much. So, um, yeah, should be good. That burned down for a while. Having a nice cup of coffee, trying to get a little bit of a pick-me-up in me. And uh, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of tackle organization. Clean up my uh, my tackle situation while we're waiting for the fire to burn down. So, all right. So I just quasi went through my tackle that I have stored right in the uh, the shed enclosure, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got too much tackle. I'm gonna go through it all properly tomorrow and separate out what I want to get rid of. Um, I don't exactly know how to give it away. I don't know any up and coming bass fishermen that could use a ton of tackle. Um, but anyways. Anyways, I snagged some stuff from in there. And now it's all organized. Uh, I want to try throwing this thing. It's made by West End. I think they're a Scandinavian based company. And they do a lot of pike fishing out there. And I think that's what this lure is for. I think I've thrown it once or twice. It has pretty good action, but I'd like to throw it again. Uh, yeah. Got some jigs, some uh, underspins, jig heads, weights, weights, hooks, 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 pegs. All my terminal tackle, everything I need. Poker's still a little bit too hot. I think we're reading like three, roughly 350 right now. And that's on the cold side of the, uh, of the smoker. So, we wait. An hour later, I've got the trout on. I just put it on. I don't know why I didn't pick the camera up. But, uh, yeah, she's smoking away. Don't want to keep that open too long. It's running a little hotter than I'd like, but uh, I think it's going to work out. So, I decided to whip up a glaze real quick. Garlic, brown sugar, teriyaki sauce, a little bit of olive oil. I think that's it. Um, but I basted it once. I'm going to go ahead and hit it again. If you uh, have eaten and filleted your fish or trout, you'll know that some cut better than others. This one cut particularly poorly. Um, it was a long, healthy looking fish. But once I got down to filleting it, it was actually pretty emaciated. Um, it was definitely a hungry trout. Um, didn't have a damn thing in its belly. Uh, that would explain the lack of meat that we got off the fish. I did the best I could. I think we still got quite a bit of meat, but uh, yeah. So it didn't cut the best. Um, it's got more of that white palish coloration of the meat uh, versus sometimes like a really a really good cutting trout will have like a pinkish meat, almost like a salmon. This wasn't that case, um, but I'll give you a look at the I'll give you a look at the meat, the progress so far. Like I said, I just basted it with the glaze once. It's starting to caramelize a little bit. I'm gonna hit it with the, the glaze again right now. All right, we are getting there. I've just been basing that like every 15 minutes, trying to get a good glaze on it. Every once in a while, I let my cat Finn out. He loves getting out and smelling the fresh air. Um, this is Finn. I think I've showed him on the channel before, but uh, he's got big blue eyes. <laughs> what are you doing? What's up, bro? Are you enjoying this fresh air? 
Yeah. He's my man. He's such a good boy. The most gentle cat. I don't think I've ever seen him pissed off. So he's got the funniest little meow. He's a big boy, he's husky. Um, he can still move pretty good. Uh, but he's got this really, really soft spoken meow. It's hilarious. Um, but he doesn't do it very often. He's not a very vocal cat. You got all kinds of fuzzies on you, brother. Careful. Whew, I had to wrangle. I had to wrangle old son up. Uh, it was going good. Yeah, he's good for the first little bit, but uh, you see something change in his eyes when he just stops listening and he is just focused on getting birds. And uh, like I said, he could still move good for a big boy, uh, which he just proved again. But uh, yeah, he was he was over there. We were checking out the inside of the enclosure and stuff like that. And there was two morning doves sitting like 10 feet away. Thank God he didn't see him. I don't know how he didn't see those birds and these freaking stupid morning doves are just sitting there looking at Finn. Um, so anyways, I, I sort of corralled him over back to the, the back porch here. And a little finch comes by, and he just whoa, bolted, and I was like, oh, hell. Wrangled him up, got him back inside. He's had his adventure for the day. It's actually looking pretty good now. After I got that glaze on it, and it started to caramelize and everything like that, it's, it's looking good. Um, it's well up to temp. Um, I kind of want to try a piece. Let's try a piece. This is the thickest piece. Let's just try... Let's try this guy right here. Oh, that actually looks quite good. There we go. That's all I want right there. I don't know. Bro. Bro. The garlic and the teriyaki and the brown sugar. Uh, plus all the Oliver smoke, man. I'd never had trout quite like it. I've never had tr smoked trout, surprisingly. I've had trout cooked any other way you can think of. I've eaten a lot of rainbow trout in my life. Uh, but that's something different right there. That's something special. So, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm really stoked now. Um, put a smile on my face for sure. Exciting. Alright, you guys, I think I'm going to end the video out finally. I know this one has been probably the longest video I've done in a long time. But yeah, here's the finished product. I enjoy it. It is tasty in my book. Kind of fell apart when I was getting it off the smoker there, but... Um, what started out as a trout that did not cut so well uh, ended in what's going to be a yummy dinner for me. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking with it and staying tuned. Thanks for the continued support on the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.